Okay, so we finished up with Houston, Minnesota, and I do want to mention uh, something that I was mentioning to the mayor just a moment ago as part of your assignment, and I'm quite serious about this. I really do want you to begin to read some of these books and discuss them with other people uh, to get some idea. There's a lot of really smart people in this room, but we need it to, to get a lot better. This is a book that, that all of you really, I would encourage you to read if you have a business or if you're a school or, or whatever it is. It's by Jim Collins, and it's called Good to Great, and I know a lot of you in the room have read it. This is Good to Great with the, uh, and the Social Sector. This is the companion book. It also comes on a disc or tape, and uh, I was telling the group this morning, I probably listened to that tape I'd say 15 or 16 times, my wife would say at least 15,000 times. Uh, in fact, I, we, we were headed off not too long ago. Uh, Andre, where are you? Andre's still here. Andre, we were going through Chattanooga, and she says, is that tape going to come on? And I said, well, yes, it is. <laughs> if the motor's running, then I'm listening to Jim Collins. What he says in here, and, and it, he studied corporations that have gone from being good corporations to being great corporations. And he says that basically there, it's, he reduces it to a pretty simple level. He says the first job is to get the right people, to get the right people on the bus and the wrong people off the bus. Now, in social settings, that's not easy. Uh, I mean, bastards just multiply. I mean, they're just, they're just there. They just come with a bus, I think. Uh, and, and you can't always get them off the bus. It's pretty hard. You could fire them in your business, but you can't get rid of them. But you just have to work around them. The naysayers are always going to be there. Guaranteed. In my little town, town of 357 in uh, North Carolina, where we live during the, the summer and the fall, little plant by the town, name of Bakersville. We had a flood that just destroyed our, almost our whole town. We had to build, rebuild the town. And one of the things that we've done is build a, 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 a creek walk. It's an asphalt creek walk, about as wide as this aisle right here. And we're quite proud of that, that creek walk. Uh, we built it ourselves. I mean, we, we physically built it. And uh, it's, about, it's almost a mile long. We can walk on it, and we, it's lighted. I mean, we did it. We were awfully proud of it. And we were finishing up the, the thing, and, and one, of the, one of the naysayers hollered out across the stream, what are you going to do when the flood comes and washes that damn thing away? <laughs> and without missing a beat, we said, we're going to build it back. And that's what we're going to do if it floods again. We hope it doesn't. But that's what we'll do. So the naysayers you got. And so you just, you just live with them. Now here's the irony. There's about six of them that sit on what we call the naysayers bench there. It's a Texaco station. <laughs> that's nothing against Texaco. It's just, they're just sitting there. And uh, all six of them, because they're so sedentary and sitting there, have, among other things, they probably do other things that, that cause this problem. They all have heart problems. And the doctors recommended, you need to get out and walk on that. <laughs> so there is some justice in the world. <laughs> Let's talk just a bit more about Jim Collins' book, Good to Great. The first task, he says, is to get the good people, get the right people on the bus. Now, he says the right people are those people we talked about earlier who have the persistence, uh, and he calls it will, to get things done. Now, clearly we have done that in the places I just told you about, right? We've done that against enormous odds. We did it. And the humility to give other people the credit. He calls those type five leaders, level five leaders. You have some level five leaders in here in the town. I've met them already one day. All of us 
need to be leaders in one area or another. What I find in successful communities, it is full of leaders. It is leaderful. All of you have a role to play. One of the questions I was asked to, to address would be, what would be some short-term goals that we could engage in here in Merced? And I didn't answer that this morning. It was on the list of questions given to me. I'm going to answer it now, because I knew you'd be here tonight. Here's my recommendation. What I'd like for you to do is to think tonight when you go home, and I hope you'll be pumped up uh, by what these neat people are doing. I'd like for you to look and say, what is it that I really want to get done? What is it I want to do? What am I willing to invest my money and my time in? And do expect to invest your money to it. So don't ask somebody else to come in and invest your money for you. Don't go asking for a grant. If it's important to you, come up with the money. I work in all black neighborhoods where we sell a lot of fried chicken and barbecue and do a whole lot of things, and nobody gives us any handouts. So what is it you want to do, you personally want to do? What is it you would like to invest your time and your energy and your money in? Then what I'd like for you to do is to, to think about what you're going to have to do with your schedule, because you're all busy people, I know that, to adjust your schedule be able to do it. Can't say, well, I don't have the time. What's important enough to you to do something that you're going to invest your time and energy in? How are you going to arrange your schedule to do what needs to be done? Then I would like for you to think about who else would likely be interested in doing that same thing. Who would they be? And I'd like for you, before the end of this week, to call them. And if they say yes, you ask them, who else needs to be with us? You call them. And then you get them and you say, who else do we need? This is basically the way community development gets done. It doesn't get done by some dumb college professor talking to people. It gets done by people recognizing that there are important things to do and you roll up your sleeves and do it. Don't expect somebody else to do it. Don't expect your mayor or your city councilman to do it. Here's what I'm finding. I'm finding that most of the towns that I look at and most of the county governments are either broke or darn near broke in every town in the United States. There's no money there. It's the private sector that's going to drive this. The public sector will be a good partner. They will be. But you've got to do most of the work. You've got to do most of the heavy lifting. Did I mention a mayor or an elected official in anything I've just told you? I don't have a single case where I can mention one either. What I've been telling people is that the answers to a lot of these issues are at the cutting edge. They're at the edge. Elected officials who go to the edge, even if it's a good idea, will probably lose the next election because the constituency is in the middle. So it's going to get done by the private sector with the full cooperation with the public sector. The public sector that I've found is full of good public servants. But mostly what the public sector works on or infrastructure matters, roads, bridges, etc. They have money to do that. But to solve the kind of problems we're talking about, they don't have the money and frequently don't have the training. So I'm calling on you to be good citizens. There's a very fine book, it's one of, the most, it's one of my very favorite books, by a man by the name of Alexis de Tocqueville. Tocqueville, a French aristocrat, who came to the United States in the 1830s. And we were a backwater nation then. And he looked around and, and he said, this is going to be one of the great nations of the world. And the reason it's going to be one of the great nations of the world, he said, everywhere I went with these Americans, where there was a problem, 
They rolled up their sleeves and got to work on it. With too many dogs and cats, they created an animal control system. If they had a flood, they cleaned it up. I think he's right. I think that's what made the United States a powerful nation, was the citizens banding together to do what had to be done. And so I'm begging you uh, to do that. Let me tell you about a community which does this in spades. Uh, we can just turn this. No, show, me, show them the, the model. Let's, let's get over to the model real quick. Right here. What I've done, I told the group today at, at uh, breakfast, there were about, a group of about 15 that I met with. And let me just run through this. You've got this in your, in your material. And let me run this through you. This has come as a result of about 35 to 40 years of work in which I didn't do it for people like you. I really did it for me because I'm not very bright and I need to draw myself a picture to see how this works, to see how community development works. And I'm going to, at the risk of offending the people that I told this story to before, I'm going to tell it again. First thing I'm going to tell you is that it's much more complicated than what I show there. It's many times more complicated than what I show there. And I worked on that, trying to develop this model, where I was actually sketching it out. And what I had done was go down to our local business supply office and get a sheet of, of newsprint. And I bought every color pen they had. In fact, the next day, the lady called me back and said, Dr. Grisham, I got another color for you. And I said, what is it? And she said, it's mauve. And I said, mauve, is that a color? And she said, yeah. And I said, well, does crayon acknowledge that? And she said, yes, they do. Well, I put that in there. So what I try to do is to show the connections that happen. I've, I've talked to you about a lot of things that had connections, remember? Everything I've talked to you had connections, right? Everything had connections. So I tried to show blue lines going into aqua lines, going into purple lines and whatnot. There's dotted lines because there's people that get in it but don't stay in it. There's people that's in there for a little short time, just a little bit, and so I put them in because they're real important. And I was finishing, and I was actually in California when I was finishing. I was in Crescent City, California. I don't know if you know where that is. That's, that's right on the Oregon line. And I was flying back from Crescent City, and uh, I was working on it on the plane. I thought I'd call my wife. And I said, I'm going to be able to finish this, this thing when I, when I get home. I'm work on it on the, on the plane. So I, I was working on it, and we got to San Francisco and got, on a, got, got rid of the puddle jumper and got onto a real plane. And uh, the lady who sat down next to me, a charming lady, and, and I was really intent on this. I mean, I've been working on this thing for months, and, and I really thought this was going to win me some kind of Pulitzer or something, you know, showing the complexity of community development. And I'm, and I'm working on it, but she never interrupts me. She never did. She was so curious. She would look, just kind of glance over. And when I look at her, I wasn't looking at you. So we're coming down in Memphis, and the guy says, you know, put up your stuff and whatnot. And so I'm starting to roll it up. And she says, pardon me, are you an artist? And I, I kind of snapped my head back, and I looked at it. And, and, and I thought immediately of the artist Jackson Pollock, who had... Lots of colors. You had, and poor Jackson Pollock had mental problems and drinking problems and drug problems. And, and I looked at all these colors splashed all over this, and I thought, that looks like what Jackson Pollock would have done in his most schizophrenic, <laughs> drunk-induced stage. And I said, well, no, ma'am, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not an artist. I'm probably the least creative person you're ever going to meet. So she said to me, well, well what is it? And I said, well, it's a model of how community development works. Now, oh, this very bright lady knows the importance of asking the right question. She doesn't challenge me. She just says, is it really? And I said, well, yes, ma'am, it is. She pauses again and again asks the right question. She said, well, do you understand it? And I got it back out and looked at it, and I said, well, scary as it is, actually I do. Michelle, she took my hand. She, she said, honey, the 
Don't ever show that to anybody. <laughs> so you're smart, but I've still dumbed down the model. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you it's much more complex than that. But for a dummy like me, this is enough that I need to know. Let's walk through here, and then let's go with one more case study. The process begins, as we said, with a catalyst. Oftentimes, that, as I told you, the catalyst simply says, I've had it. Just had it. I know that feeling. I grew up in a poor Mississippi. And I didn't want to be there. And what, what really, really got next to me was that people thought that if you were poor and from Mississippi, you were stupid. I damn, I'll show them. Uh, I was accepted to Harvard, didn't go. Went to a state university, the University of North Carolina. And I went there because they had done, that university has probably done as much to raise the quality of life for people in their state as any state university that I know. And I wanted them to be my teachers, and they were. I really wanted to go to Harvard and stay there. Just look at the problems of Mississippi through a rearview mirror, or the Christian Science Monitor, or the New York Times, and think, thank God I'm away from there. But I matured. It happens to you whether you deserve it or not. What I decided was if I wanted a better Mississippi, if I, if I had courage, I'd work at this. I wouldn't run away from it. So I came back. But I've spent much of my life trying to get to learn. The self-improvement is ongoing. I beg you, get better. Get a whole lot better. The last book I'm going to suggest to you is a book by a man with the, the name of Dupree. D-E-P-R-E-E. -E. D-E-P-R-E-E. -E. Max Dupree. Do any, does anybody in here know the company Herman Miller? They make some of the finest furniture in the world. Max Dupree is the CEO of Herman Miller. And his book, Leadership is an Art, is a wonderful, wonderful piece. It'll teach you the kind of leadership that you'll need to get done here. So look at that. So catalysts, they work on themselves, not the community. I'll guarantee you, you go out and try to work on the community before you're ready You'll screw it up and you'll lose your credibility. Don't do it. Work on yourself. What I find is that these catalysts usually start out with a very vague notion of what needs to be done. I call it an improved community. Not a clear idea at all. We never had an idea when we started in Houston, Minnesota. And I've got to finish this Houston, Minnesota story. I left out something. 2008, we we're listed in USA uh, News, no, uh, US World, Re World Report, yeah, as one of the best schools in the United States. Not one of the best small schools, but one of the best schools. We were on Jim Lehrer's program as one of the most innovative schools in the United States. So we never dreamed we'd do it. We were trying to save a school. We didn't want our school to close. You start with simple things like that, our backs against the wall. And the vision grows. I find a lot of people paralyzed because they don't have a clear vision of what needs to happen. Well, it doesn't happen that way. It, the vision will grow. And so you get started. You get started the way I just told you. Find something that you can do that you want to be invest your time and interest in. Then you find somebody else with the same passion. That's that personal commitment. Who else has that kind of commitment? One of the things I found in my work is that they come in pairs. That many of these really top leaders have a partner. And the partner keeps them going. When, when they get down, the partner stays going. They, 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 they have partners. I need to tell you also, the majority of the key leaders in all of my communities right now in 2009 are women. 
the majority of the key leaders are women. Of my four level five leaders that I've discovered recently, three of the four are women. Uh, that makes me encouraged. I don't know how, how it makes you. Then you begin to, to add to your numbers. I don't know whether you want to call it a team or what you want to call it. Remember, you've called people and you got them on board and you call other people. Now, I work with poor communities that have just had the sugar kicked out of them. I mean, we've just been beat down and beat down and beat down. We lost confidence. And so what we have to do is to start with a little bitty project. And often that little bitty project is just cleaning up the town. Just getting it clean. I work a lot in Huntington, West Virginia. It's one of my very favorite places. One guy there who, who said he just put on his grubby clothes and picked up a little, little thing that he calls a litter getter. And he just went around the town picking up litter. Picking up litter because he thought it needed to be done. Now, he looked like a, he looked like a, 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 a homeless fellow, really. Uh, and he got a lot of attaboys, or what the heck are you doing? He just kept on until somebody else added him. We now have over 1,100 people in what we call the Litter Getter Club. I'm a dues-paying member in the Litter Getters Club. Uh, but we had to do that. Because we, we're, we're in the southern end of the Rust Belt, and we've just had the sugar kicked out of us. Transformation has taken place there. We now know we can do things, simple things. But we can do things. After that, the group begins to think, in, in, in my research, uh, and, and you might note, you may not note, they were kind of surround this box with leadership. What we mean is we encourage people to, the leader encourages others to become engaged and to think. The leaders are not the smartest people there. They rarely are. They rarely are. That isn't their gift. The leadership's best gift is getting other people together. That's the best gift that leaders can do is getting them together. And so we do possibility thinking. And what I mean by that we raise the question, what is it we could do? And the first thing we look at is right here. What is it, that, what are the resources that we could use? Now, here again, your place at Castle is a gold mine. That's a great, great resource. This university is a great resource, and you got it. Your medical center is and will be a great resource. And, and you could list the other kind of internal assets that you have. Now, what these communities do then, they say, well, what is it we don't have but we could reach? What is it we could reach? Uh, you, you have access to, the, to really the finest higher education in the world. Not just in the University of California system, you may want to go to Carnegie Mellon. You need to go to MIT. You may need to look in to see what they're doing in Oxford, what they're doing at Cambridge, what they're doing in a number of places. But you have access pretty much to the world. So what are the other resources that you need to get this done? What are the external resources? Then you tend to form organizations or agencies that get it done. You're going to need to scale down and focus. The key organization, the Play, I'm going to tell you about uh, is just fantastic. I'll tell you about them in just a minute. They take on projects, and through persistence, they begin to develop an extraordinary community. And then they reinvest. Now, this reinvestment probably comes after the extraordinary community. It, I, I have never figured out where it comes. I really don't. But, but extraordinary communities make money, and they reinvest it in the community itself. And so I'm not sure, I, I think the reinvestment comes first to take them on to that next level. But it keeps on, they keep reinvesting. Now let's walk through a community that, that did that. 